for many of us, we have early childhood memories of getting our hair permed, or what is now commonly referred to as relaxed. We never really took the time out to think about what this chemical is really doing to our hair and scalp. Most of us have experienced burns, scabs, and extreme dandruff on our scalp as a result. All we knew was that it made our hair bone straight and a lot easier to handle. The straighter, the better. In this video, I'm going to be going over step-by-step step what's really going on, a brief history lesson on relaxers, and some common myths associated with relaxers. Before I start, please keep in mind that a relaxer is a man-made chemical. It's engineered to serve one purpose, regardless of the repercussions and consequences associated with continued use. Believe it or not, I'm so obsessed with hair that I thought of this experiment in a dream. I wanted to come up with a way to show my viewers exactly what the chemicals and relaxers are slowly doing to your hair. Many relaxers instruct to leave the chemical on your hair strands for about 20 minutes. So many of us don't notice the slow chemical burn the relaxer is causing to your cuticles every time it touches your hair. After a while of continued use, all we start to notice is weaker, thinner hair, hair that doesn't seem to grow past a certain length, and extremely split and damaged ends. So I decided to extend the chemical burning process to show exactly what's happening to relaxed hair. I measured out and mixed a small portion of the relaxer cream and activator in a small plastic cup and placed one of my shedded hair strands in the chemical. Without tampering or touching the coated strand, I let it sit for 8 hours. I wasn't surprised to find that the chemical did what it's engineered to do and completely burned through my hair. The brown areas are the remaining specks of protein that my hair left behind. The relaxer chemical is still eating away and will eventually burn away the rest of the brown protein residue. As I mentioned in my two-part series on pH balance, Human hair has a naturally acidic pH level of about 3 to 5. And on the other hand, relaxers have an extremely alkaline pH that can range from 10 to 14. Once the alkaline relaxer chemical is introduced to your hair strands, it will dramatically lift and even eat away at your protective cuticle layers. In my two-part series on pH, I also mentioned that there are two rules to keep in mind when dealing with pH. First, to only put products in your hair that fall within the safe zone, which is a pH of 3 to 5. And second, to avoid any process that will create pH swings. Relaxers violate both rules. Most relaxers are sold as a six-step process. The first step is usually to coat the strands that have already been relaxed with some kind of cream that often contains many build-up synthetic ingredients that contain a ton of parabens. This usually has a pH of about five. The second and third step is to mix a liquid activator with the cream. The mixture of the two creates the relaxer. Relaxers are always extremely alkaline with a pH of 10 to 14 and contain many toxic ingredients that if inhaled frequently can cause serious respiratory damage. Remember what happened when I mixed an acidic substance with an alkaline substance? Watching this, it's not difficult to imagine the level of destruction that's going on when you put an alkaline relaxer on your acidic hair strands. The chemicals in relaxers have to reach your cortex in order for your hair to have a straightened appearance. In order to accomplish that, the alkaline product is engineered to lift and even burn the protective cuticle layers that are there to protect your delicate cortex. Honestly, your protective cuticle layers are simply in the way. The chemical will eat away at your cuticles in order to reach and permanently change your cortex. And over time, once it has eaten away at your cuticles, it will start eating away at your cortex, as shown in the experiment earlier in this video. Lie and no lie relaxers not only burn away at your hair, it could also cause scalp irritations, burns, infections, and major health problems, especially for children. The reason why I say a pair straight is because tight, kinky, curly hair can never be completely straight. Here is what's really going on on a microscopic level. When the protein bonds are broken down and distorted by the relaxer, it causes the integrity of your curl to fall and stretch down. Apart from the chemical burns to your protective cuticle layers and the intake of harmful toxins to your body, hair, and scalp, this forced stretch causes serious damage to the bendy areas of your hair strands and frequently causes mid-strand splits. So rather than being called straightened hair, it should be called stretched out curly hair. After your cuticles have been burned and lifted from the relaxer, the fourth step to this process is often some kind of neutralizing shampoo. The word shampoo is a bit misleading in this context. It's a disguise word for what it really is, which is a pH adjuster. With a pH of about five to six, the neutralizing shampoo serves two main roles. First, to quickly close up the rest of your damaged cuticles, and secondly, to strip the hair of any remaining relaxer you may have left behind when rinsing. This shampoo often smells really good and feels really silky, but it's extremely harsh and usually contains SLS within the first three ingredients. It's as harsh as detergent. The chemicals in the relaxer step are so harsh and toxic and the pH is so alkaline that relaxers normally come with a fifth step, which is often called a reconstructor treatment or conditioner. This is also filled with harmful synthetic chemicals. With a pH of five to six, this science concoction also helps in quickly closing your remaining cuticle layers. The last two steps are usually chemicals that you're instructed to leave in your hair. 
The manufacturers of these relaxer kits often call it a leave-in conditioner and a moisturizer, but in reality it's really just another pH adjuster, or in this case a pH decreaser, masked in cheap low-value ingredients like mineral oil and parabens. Notice how relaxers violate both pH balance rules. All the steps in the relaxer process are not in the safe zone, and second, relaxers cause your hair's pH to experience swings. With all these toxic ingredients, no wonder why they're often hidden in the bottom of the box. So you're probably thinking, I know someone who's relaxed but still has long, straight, thick, healthy, beautiful hair. Why is that? The answer is because these individuals already have what I like to call the real definition of good hair. Referring back to my Green Beauty Complete Hair Type Chart, those that are still able to maintain full, healthy, relaxed hair not only practice almost perfect techniques in completing the relaxer process, they also have a combination hair type that results in lower maintenance, very strong, resilient hair strands. In other words, before relaxing, they already had really great hair. Ironically, the hair relaxer was invented by an African-American man, Garrett Augustus Morgan Sir. The idea of hair relaxers came from working on sewing machines in his workshop. When the chemical he used to work on the sewing machines got all over his hands, he wiped his hands off on a coarse wool rag and found that the chemical gave the cloth a smoother appearance. An idea sparked to use the same chemical to straighten African American hair. His first live test subject was a dog, a breed that has naturally curly hair. The dog's hair successfully uncurled. The same results occurred when he tested the chemical on his own head. In 1913, he started marketing this chemical as a hair refiner. As displaced Africans, we did not have other black people to use as reference in what our beauty looks like. Because of this, we measured and tried to copy a different type of beauty. This led to us straightening our hair and even bleaching our skin in an effort to resemble other races' definition of beauty. The many, many years that have gone by has masked the obvious reasons for our community taking part in this destructive ritual. But the fact still remains the same, that our mentality has not changed. To this day, we still use relaxers to quote unquote, improve our appearance. With proper education on how to take care of our natural hair, we will start to see that there is really nothing to improve. Hello everyone, it's Nikki. So before I wrap up this video, I wanted to hop on camera real quick to go over some common misleading myths about relaxers. The first myth is that texturizers and jerry curls are not relaxers. The truth is that they are. They are regular relaxers with the same ingredients. The only difference is that they're left on your hair for a shorter amount of time, but they're just as damaging. The second myth is that no lie relaxers are less damaging than lie relaxers. This is completely not true. While no lie relaxers formulations have been shown to be less damaging on your scalp, it's still just as damaging to your hair strands if not more than lie relaxers. The difference is in the chemical compound responsible for straightening your hair. Lie relaxers use sodium hydroxide, and no lie relaxers use either guanidine, lithium, or potassium hydroxide. These are all harsh and toxic chemicals and should not come in contact with your skin or your hair. The next myth is that kitty relaxers are not as harsh as regular relaxers. This is also not true. In fact, kitty relaxers are formulated with the assumption that you've never had a relaxer before. So they usually have a higher pH level, which is more damaging. Here's an interesting fact. Did you know that this is the same chemical used to make drain cleaners to unclog sinks? It's also even used to remove fur from animals in the leather making industry. By now, I'm sure you all get the point that chemical relaxers are not good for your hair. They can cause frizzy hair, split ends, dry and brittle hair, tons of breakage and thinning, permanent hair loss, scalp irritation and burns, and scalp infections. Chemical relaxers have also been linked to hormonal issues in girls and respiratory and gastrointestinal problems. Frankly, it's disturbing that it's so important in our community to have that image of straight and silky hair that we're willing to risk our own health and the health of our children to get it. Well, that's it. As always, thank you for watching and I hope this video helps someone. See you next video.